Welcome back everybody to my roundup of F1 2018 testing. We're in week two now and it's day five of winter testing and again it was another day filled with some drama and usually I don't expect testing to be like this and we've seen in the past testing days where nothing happens whatsoever, no red flags, no stoppages, all clean sailing. No, that did not happen today, especially for McLaren. Three red flags in total, two for Stoffel Van Dorn, one for Max Verstappen, but Van Dorn had a total of three issues which caused the scar to stop today. Not great at all. Three issues over testing, you're questioning, oh dear, that's a bit, bit not fantastic, but three in one day is ridiculous. The first two issues they had, by that time, they'd done eight laps on track, and then they only did 30 more, and they had another failure. Fuming, absolutely fuming from McLaren. In my review of week one, I thought they'd got their act together, but this week, this is this is not good enough. It really isn't, and it looks like all of the issues were hydraulic based. Um, the team have not yet come out and said officially what it is, but it all looks like it's to do with hydraulics and to do with the engine, which isn't great for McLaren at all. The only saving grace was the fact that Van Dorn was not last. <laughs> in the timings, however, Stroll was last, he was on the Hypersofts, and I definitely think there's some huge sandbagging going on there. And so, Van Dorn effectively was last. But, can McLaren take away any positives from today? Perhaps. You know, there's always the option that failures, it saves them having to experience them during a race weekend. But, 38 laps is extremely limited running. They're still ahead of Red Bull, still ahead of Force India, so in that regard, not too much to worry about. But obviously it's not a great start to their new partnership with Renault, which begins this season after leaving Honda last season. So, And Honda's still yet to have any issues this season as well, so with Toro Rosso, all great at the moment. Pierre Gasly was fifth today, so this actually rounds us off. Might as well just run through the order of today. And Sebastian Vettel was top for the second time in testing with a 1 minute 20 in the Ferrari. Then was Valtteri Bottas in the Mercedes, also 1 minute 20. His was the 1 minute 20.5 and two temps exactly behind Sebastian Vettel. Max Verstappen was in third in the Red Bull with another 1 minute 20 and Lewis Hamilton is in fourth with another 1 minute 20. Gasly was also 1 minute 20 in fifth, so the difference between first and fifth was 6 tenths, so Vettel was a 1.20 396 and Gasly was a 120.973, so really close at the top. Magnussen was in sixth for Haas, great effort there from Haas, they really struggled at the beginning of the testing, so this is a good bounce back today. Hulkenberg was seventh for Renault with a 121, eighth was Sainz for Renault with a 121, ninth was Sorokin with Williams with a 121, <laughs> Perez was 10th for Force India, 11th was Marcus Ericsson for Sauber, who today have announced a new test driver and it's actually their former development driver Tatiana Calderon the Colombian F3 driver or GP3 driver actually I apologize who is 24 years old being that age I don't think she's ever gonna have a chance at a real Formula One seat although you never know you really never know I think the most likely first woman to ever get into Formula One in a real race seat is still looking like Sophia Flourish who if you don't know she is in the Arrow of My Driver series, that's who I want about there. She looks like she's the most likely. However, there's also Jamie Chadwick, who is 19 and in F3, is also a female, who also could be in for a run-in for an F1C in the future. So you never know. There's also that controversy going on with Carmen Jordan at the moment with her comments about Formula E. However, that's another topic for another day. Today is about testing, but I just thought I'd give you that little roundup for that segment to do with Sauber. Then was Stoffel van Dorn in the list, going back to the testing times now, who was on a 1 minute 21.9. And like I said, heading up the rear of the field was Lance Stroll in the Williams on the Hypersofts with a 1 minute 22.9. And that really was all that happened today. Verstappen's error that I mentioned earlier was to do with a fault on his car. Again, not a driver error. And Red Bull have not said anything, and I'm not surprised about that at Red Bull, they haven't earlier on in the week. But Red Bull, more issues as well, it's going under the radar, 
but Red Bull are not having a good start to testing. And it could be another season where Red Bull are behind, which in my predictions I did not think would happen, but it could be likely. Definitely doesn't look likely that they're gonna be winning straight off the bat like I thought they would be. However, you never know. You really never know. And any team on the grid could surprise us. I really can't stress enough, I keep saying it, and I keep seeing comments questioning about me saying teams are sandbagging. They 100% are. There's, these cars can go quicker than one minute 20s. There's no doubt about that. I said earlier on last week, I'm expecting the late 117s to really be the times we're expecting at the end of this week. I, th I think that's definitely the case. And by the time we get here in the season, 116s. I really think that's the case. And teams can't show their full pace or else it gives other teams ideas on, wow, why, so say Mercedes is quickest by four seconds. They think, oh wow, what's Mercedes doing that we aren't, that we can steal? So by doing this, it gives Mercedes that advantage. I'm just theoretically saying Mercedes. It gives Mercedes that advantage that the teams won't know until Australia, which is only two weeks away pretty much now. Fantastic stuff. But sandbagging is a real thing and it's definitely taking place here in testing and it'll continue to take place until we crop up in Australia, which, like I said, really, really close now. And the season fever is definitely hotting up. I said last week that if you're new to the channel and you've seen the Formula One Weekly, then you will know it, the idea is that is it's a weekly series. However, because of testing and all the busy nature of Formula One in this current period, F1 Weekly is put on hold. And generally, if there's a story worth talking about, for example, yesterday's video on the new F1 team potentially coming in this season, I will put out a video on it explaining. And I might very well, as mentioned earlier, put out a video about female F1 drivers or potential F1 drivers. And I don't want to call it the Carmen Jordan scandal at the moment, but the Carmen Jordan hatred at the moment after her comments on Formula E. So anyway, guys, that's the end of testing day five. Tomorrow, testing will begin in straight away and going straight through to five o'clock in the evening. So expect the video to not be out too late tomorrow, actually. I'm not really doing a lot tomorrow, so won't be too busy. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed another episode of the testing breakdown, and I'll see you in the next one.